The first upgrade of the worktable will change its name to intermediate worktable. It will unlock new recipes, like for the tools you will be able to craft the iron axe and the iron pick hammer. From the refining materials you will be able to craft the bloodstone saws, bloodstone core, hardwood fans, valve, copper pot, bronze frame, glass lens, pumping pipe, steel frame and the filtration core. To get this station, the first step is to visit the top right side of the Sandrock city where you have to enter inside the research center. Here you will find an NPC called the Chi you have to speak to. Between the social options you have to choose the third one called Research. Next you need to access the second side tab. Where under the normal one you will notice that you will be able to unlock the intermediate one. It will require 10 data disks to start the research and it will take 2 days to complete. Using the speed up option you will be able to pay extra data disks to decrease the amount of day you need to wait. After the research will be completed you will receive a mail you have to open. Inside it you will find an item that after you will acquire you will learn how to build this intermediate work table. By the way, let's speak a little bit about the data disks required to unlock the recipe. The easier way to obtain them is by going exactly to the bottom right side from your workshop where you will find the Ufala salvage shop. By interacting with the cash desk in the right corner you will be able to buy up to 10 data disks each day for a price of 20 gold each. If you don't want to spend gold, craft a stone pick hammer at your work table. Next, on the right side from Eofala's salvage shop, enter inside the salvage area. Here you will find some pile of junk you can mine down. Doing so has a random chance to drop several times the data disks. For a more efficient way you have to progress in the storyline until you will repair the crane leaf that will allow you to access the ancient ruins. Inside this dungeon series you will be able to mine down the terrain. Doing so has a high chance to drop several data disks. For the passive way you have to progress in the mine storyline until you will unlock in the bottom left corner of the Sandrock city the civil corpse. In the left corner of this building you will find a board you can interact with. Next you have to select the hazardous ruins. Next using the sliders you can decide how many runs they will do and how many days you want to wait for the result. Based on what you choose, uh, the price will change. You can post up to 3 commissions at a time. After the commissions will be completed, you will receive a mail with the rewards forecasted in the board. If you max out all the sliders, you will notice that you will be able to obtain 35 data disks for each commission. This means that you will be able to get up to 105 data disks passively from these 3 commissions. A bonus tip, while progressing in the mine storyline, sometimes you will visit several dungeons. Pay attention at the terrain in this dungeon, because sometimes you will be able to mine it down, the same way you do in the ancient ruins. The cool part about these dungeons is that the stamina won't be depleted while mining. Plus the day-night cycle will be paused until you will finish them, so you can take your time to mine all them down. If you do, from some of these dungeons you will literally obtain for free over 200 data disks. Going back to the main topic about the intermediate work table. Now that you have the recipe, you can craft it at the assembly station or upgrade the old work table to the intermediate level. In both cases, you will need some marble slab, copper wire, old parts and hardwood sticks. The main difference between crafting a new one and upgrading an already existing one is that you will need less resources in order to upgrade it. But instead of these resources you will need to use some machine upgrade kits. To obtain the marble slab that is the first ingredient, before you will be able to obtain it visit the bottom right side of the Sandrock city, where you will need to visit the commerce guild building. Immediately on the right you will find a cash desk you have to interact with. From where you will need to buy the marble slab recipe that will cost around 150 gold. Now that you have it, you will be able to use the processor in order to convert two marble bricks into one marble slab. 
For the marble brick you also will need the recipe from the commerce guild that this time will cost somewhere around 70 gold. Now that you have it, interact with the furnace in order to be able to produce it using 4 marble. For the marble, before you will be able to farm it, you first need to obtain a bronze pick hammer. Thanks to it you will be able to mine down the monuments and the hard rocks you will find around your workshop. Hard rocks will give you a lower amount of marble compared to monuments. After you will obtain your first weapon you also will be able to obtain some marble by defeating some moving cactuses called the thorny jumper. If you don't want to use your stamina and obtain some marble easy you have to reach the construction junction located in the central part of the city. Close to the entrance you will find a cash desk you have to interact with, where you will be able to buy up to 25 marble for a price of 12 gold each. At the margins of the area around the city you will find also some uh, level 28 enemies called Rock and Roll. Defeating them always will reward you with some marble as well. Once you will unlock the desert located to the left from the city you will be able to find some raw materials nodes. Mining them down will allow you to find the marble and other materials you will need later on. In the same desert you will find also another enemy called the Pensky that will reward you with some marble if you will defeat them. For the copper wire that is the second ingredient, before you will be able to craft this resource you have to visit the commerce guild. Immediately on the right find a cash desk you have to interact with, where you will be able to buy the copper wire recipe for a price of 36 gold. Now that you have it you need to go back to your workshop and interact with the grinder. From where then you will be able to convert one copper bars into a copper wire. Speaking about the copper bars that you need, the easier way to obtain it is by going to the top right side from your workshop where you will find a shop called Hammer Time. From here you will be able to buy up to 20 copper bars each day for a price of 26 gold each. In case you don't want to buy it, go to the Ufala Salvage uh, Junkyard. Initially here you will find some mixed junk piles. Mining those will reward you with some copper scraps. That next, by placing them inside the recycler you have a high chance to find some copper bars. Progressing in the storyline, inside the junkyard will appear also some metal junk piles. That besides some copper scraps will also drop directly the copper bars as well. Near the junkyard you also will find the Eufala Salvage Shop. From where you will be able to buy 10 copper scraps each day for a price of 25 gold each. While to obtain the copper scraps passively you have to progress in the storyline until you will unlock a mine quest called Keep on the Rockin. After you will be able to complete this quest, in the central part of the Ufala Salvage Shop you will be able to interact with the desk. This will allow you to access the supply delivery. This will allow you to buy and upgrade the contract. That every day will deliver in the box that will appear near your mailbox uh, some copper scraps with other materials. There is also another important method in order to obtain the copper bars. To do so you have to interact with a furnace that will allow you to convert free copper ore into one copper bar. For the copper ore itself, reach the abandoned ruins. In this dungeon you will find several copper nodes you will be able to mine in order to obtain the copper ore. Occasionally you will get it also by mining the terrain. In alternative, if you want to save your stamina or obtain the copper ore before this mine quest, you can reach the Eufala salvage shop. Here you will be able to buy up to 50 copper ore each day for a price of 4 gold each. For the old parts, that is the third ingredient, the easier way to obtain them is by visiting the Ufala salvage shop. Here you will be able to buy up to 2 old parts each day for a price of 40 gold each. If you don't want to use your gold, mining down the junk piles in the Ufala salvage junkyard you will be able to find some mechanical scraps. Next you have to place them inside your recycler and you have a higher chance to obtain some old parts this way. Progressing in the mine storyline, the mixed junk pile in the Ufala salvage will be improved over time and therefore you will be able to obtain bigger amounts of mechanical scraps. Also sometimes it will spawn even a mechanical junk pile directly, that will yield even more mechanical scrap compared to the mechanical junk pile. 
From the Ufala shop, you also will be able to buy up to 10 mechanical scraps each day for a price of 31 gold each. While well, after repairing the hydrogel for a mine quest, around the Eufalo salvage, you will notice some new structures called the Hyper Sleep Chambers that also will reward you with a decent amount of mechanical scraps. For the next farming method, access the ancient ruins. Inside those, by using the treasure detector, you will be able to find some treasure locations. By mining the terrain, blocking the passage toward the location, often you will find the old parts as well. Sometimes instead you will receive some toolboxes. Opening the basic and the advanced one will have a high chance to give you some old parts. For the most efficient way, you have to progress in the main storyline until you will unlock the Bridge Hazardous Ruins located in the bottom left corner of the Sandrock City. In fact, in this dungeon you will find a lot of robots you will be able to defeat. All of them has a good chance to drop you some old parts. Also, in this location you will find several white treasure chests. The important part is that after you will loot them, don't forget to mine them down. This is because destroying this chest will always reward you with the one old part. These white chests are also found in secret ruins and the quest dungeons. For a passive way to obtain the mechanical scraps, you can use the Ufala salvage contract explained previously. Use the timestamp you see right now if you missed this part. While for the hardwood sticks, that is the last ingredient, the main way to obtain it is by interacting with a processor that will allow you to craft it by using a for hardwood. For the hardwood itself, before you'll be able to start farming it, you have to craft the bronze axe. Thanks to it, you'll be able to chop down the dead wood that drops the hardwood. Thanks to the bronze axe, you also will be able to collect the quality wood scraps. Doing so generally will allow you to collect some fine wood scraps. That next you need to place inside your recycler in order to have a high chance to find some hardwood. There is even a chance to obtain this way the hardwood stick directly. For the next method, after you will repair the hydrogel, visit the Ufala Salvage Junkyard. After completing the quest mentioned previously, in the junk area will appear sometimes the wooden junk pile. Dismantling it using your axe will allow you to collect a good amount of hardwood. Another way to obtain it is by chopping down the cactus flower trees. The only problem is that the first time you will do so, Burgess will tell you that you cannot chop down trees. If you won't listen to his advice and continue chopping down this type of cactuses and other people will notice you doing so, will result in losing some reputation with these NPCs, plus sometimes you will even lose some gold. If you don't mind to go against the rules, craft the iron axe. This will allow you to chop down several dry box trees around your workshop. They will reward you with a huge amount of hardwood, but they will take up to 5 days to respawn. Time to speak about the machine upgrade kit in case you decided to upgrade the old one instead of building a new one. For the first kit, I suggest you to reach the central upper area of the city where you will find the temple. From its back door, uh, look to the right and you will notice under the huge right rock a chest. To bring it down, you have to pop the balloon above the chest using a throwing rock. You can find one of these rocks uh, behind the base of the red stone. Anyway, speaking about the chest, once it will fall down, reach its location and open it and you will obtain the first machine upgrade kit. For the next method, before you will be able to farm it, you have to craft any type of weapon, like a stone sword. Then, around your workshop, search for some yakmels and roosters. There are two types of yakmels, the normal and the alpha. The last one has a chance to drop the machine upgrade kit. For the rooster, you have to search the one called the Koha Doodly Doom, that is the one that drops the machine upgrade kit. If you want to obtain these kits without using the stamina, reach the shop called the Hammer Time. Here you will be able to buy up to 5 machine upgrade kits each day for a price of 128 gold each.